Hey girls, Maria Menounos here, author of The Every Girl's Guide to Life. Want to know my best tips and secrets for organization, travel, weight loss, beauty, fashion, and everything else in between? Go to bing.com slash Maria and pick up my new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Life. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, and streaming live on Ustream, this is AfterBuzz TV for Universal's Bridesmaids. Tonight's host is Aaron Buckley. Joining Aaron will be AfterBuzz co-host Tamika Lamison. We'll break down the movie and get you all the behind-the-scenes news and gossip about Bridesmaids. If you want to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off, and the buzz continues. Erin Buckley! Hi! Hi. <laughs> this is T and Buckley, T for Tamika, Tamika Lamison, and... Hello, I'm Erin Buckley. We are happy to be here with you talking about Bridesmaids! Bridesmaids, coined as the female version of Hangover. <laughs> what an awesome, awesome movie. We loved it. We walked into the movie theater. We were giggling just by going into the theater with all the energy. And one of the things we were really surprised about was how many men there were. I <laughs> know. And not just gay men, okay? <laughs> there was a lot of gay men, a lot of men with their women, you know. It was awesome. I loved it. Yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about who we are, right? To introduce us, to kick that off, right? Mm hmm. Erin, you want to go first? Yes, I'm Erin Buckley, and I'm an actress, and I'm a filmmaker, originally from Wilmington, Delaware, and um, Tamika. You're all, and you're also my best friend. Yes, and Tamika <laughs> Lamison is that. my best friend, most That's right. importantly. And um, I'm a writer, director, and filmmaker, and I also run a nonprofit called Make a Film Foundation. So, you know, film is our life. Yes, we love it. So, uh, back to Bridesmaids. Yes. What? Okay. First of all, can we just talk about Kristen Wiig? <laughs> she was so unbelievably funny. I could. I mean, I SNL. Please. She was amazing in this movie. Of course, she was. She also wrote it, co-wrote it. So right. I just love seeing her and Maya. The interaction. I thought that they really captured what being best friends is like. That comfortability and that sort of like talking about nothing sometimes, and then talking about really important things and just knowing each other so well, and that's why it was really interesting in, in one movie to see the, the arc of their friendship. Oh yeah, and also even the emotional moments. It was great how they could make the emotional moments funny. I mean, they, they connected, the chemistry was there. I really believe that they were best friends, even in the silent moments. It's like, uh, Kristen was amazing in the silent moments. Her character's name was Annie, right? Yes. And Annie was the one with all the crazy problems, and um, Maya was getting married. It was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, it was, it was so amazing to see, um, and this is very true to life sometimes, you know, some, your best friend, maybe things are, she's in cloud nine and everything's on the up, upswing for her <laughs> and you are just on the downward spiral. And you do not want to rain on her parade, so you have to sit there and really kind of be supportive while you're dying inside. <laughs> and Annie really managed to capture that in a way where you're like, oh my goodness, her life is a mess and her friend is actually, it's like the pinnacle of happiness for her friend and she's dying inside. Yes, and it just can't get worse for her, which we love. We just loved it so much. So, you know, the comparison to Hangover, what do you think about the comparison to Hangover? Because when I, I was watching the movie, and um, I actually thought it was better than Hangover, okay? Okay, I thought it was better than Hangover. You know, I'm always slightly being dragged to those male raunch style movies, and I always I always find something enjoyable about it. Um, but this, I, w I just felt so empowered. Like, yes, women, raunchy comedy. <laughs> Rah! 
are, you know? And I was, I was, yes, I agree. It was much better than Hangover. And I feel that women have stepped into a new genre. So thank you, ladies of Bridesmaids, yes, for that. Yes, thank you. And I, and I, you know, poop jokes, you know, fart jokes, poopy jokes. For some yeah. reason, when they're with women, they weren't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the yeah. poopy jokes with the women, but with the guys, why does it seem a little more, more I don't know. Gross. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to admit, guys, I owe you an apology. I've been, you know, oh, what a cheap shot, a fart joke, a sex joke. Gross, you know, but I just love this. I love, you know, her, Maya shitting in the street. I don't you know, know if I'm going to say, oh. oh, I don't know. Beep. <laughs> I know, right? Pooping. <laughs> That's so more dainty. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Pooping in the street. Dropping the kids off at the pool. Oh. <laughs> no, I like that. Dropping the kids off it's, at the pool. It's feminine. And it's what maternal. what would you say about peeing in the pool? Um, peeing in the pool. I don't know. <laughs> I have to come up with one. Maybe bridesmaids too for just, that one. Just warming the pool up. Yes. Warming the pool Keeping up a little warm. bit. Keeping it warm, right? <laughs> okay, y'all know y'all peed in the pool. Don't even try it. We all have. We all have at least once, right? Didn't make it to the bathroom. <laughs> Very relieving. Speaking of not making it to the bathroom, one of the best scenes in the entire movie, as far as I'm concerned, is the food poisoning scene. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I think uh, Aaron and I both have a little experience with food poisoning. <laughs> I mean, I was on a date with this guy, and, and this was one of my best friends, and we were finally going to do it. We were finally going to have that wonderful date, right? And so we went to the park, and I'm not sure what happened. I think I didn't realize that I had po food poisoning, so I took um, a couple of, I took like four a leave. <laughs> what did you eat? I had a. It was uh, on the oh, date. Oh, you know you what ate? it was? Or was it before you. No, date? it was before. I had some Indian food the night before, right? And it was like mm. at the end of the day, one of those buffet style Indian places oh, in New York. The buffet. Yes, and it was like where they're about to close down, so you know that food had been there all day, right? <laughs> and I was like, Do I really want Indian food? Yes, I do. I should not have done it. <laughs> I should not have done it. The red flags were everywhere, so it was the Indian food. So we're in the park, right? Nice little picnic. I even had my dog with me. And so we're starting to get a little romantic, you know, and all of Did a sudden. Did you have poop bags? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have any poop bags. They were going to be for me, not exactly. for the dog, right? But it was crazy. So we were sitting there. All of a sudden, I'm getting these cramps. Like, it must be the kind of cramps that you get when you're pregnant. It was like stomach cramps out. of. And he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, um, uh, I don't I don't think so. And so I'm grabbing my stomach and I'm like, I think I need to go. And all of a sudden I'm like, I feel like I'm about to poop my pants. I didn't and say food that to him, right? It's like a total different thing. It's just like eruption. It's like a volcano <laughs> and you can't on stop both it. ends. You can't no. do anything. So we're like going home. I have the dog, so we can't get a cab. So we're walking and every five minutes I'm like in the street kneeling down, holding the poop so that it doesn't come out all over my dress, trying not to throw up as well. It was just, and I was like, can you just take the dog? Can you take the dog? So finally we get to his house. I run in, I run to the bathroom, slam the door, and he's like knocking. He's like, are you okay? You okay? And I'm like, no, don't come in here. Don't come in here. It was so mortifying. And so finally I had, I was so sick that I didn't care anymore. I needed him. I was like, absolutely, just, just, just come on in. So he comes in, it's right? Like that. And he's like, That's why did you, was. why, why did you, why did you uh, throw up in the tub? And I was like, because I was on the toilet. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay. Ask me, did I get another date? No. <laughs> No, I did it. I but like, you still have me. I know. I know. <laughs> Food poison is crazy. I just love that too in the movie. I think they captured that so well. You know, the, the anticipation of it with the dresses, the gorgeous dresses, the pristine. And I think that's something about weddings, you know, and even <clears throat> preparing for a wedding and being in a wedding that is so there's some there's this formality to it oh yeah but then you know what humanity comes in and oh. that's some of the best stuff and that's exactly what i love you know about bridesmaids is that juxtaposition of the pristine and proper and <laughs> having everything go perfect mm -hmm. but then having humans step in the reality of life coming in now you, didn't you tell me that you de dealt a little had we were dealt a little food poisoning blow once as well 
Yes, I had a food poisoning <laughs> blow, and it happened to be after a first date as well. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm. A, it's actually a very good friend of mine. We're still friends. <laughs> we we dated on and off for a year, but um, yeah, he was. He, I knew him for a while, and it, we went to a really nice restaurant. He has very good taste, and um, and then I had to work right after that. Mm-hmm. I was bartending at the time in New York City. And it was coming on both ends, and, oh. and every all the girls I worked with, they knew they knew that we had been on our first date, so they called him and said, "What did you do to her?" And he felt horrible, and I went home in the taxi with like, you know, ten stops along the way. So. Oh my god! <laughs> See, fe- females can be raunchy. They can be really raunchy, and uh, oh, the sink. The woman on the sink. Oh my gosh. Let's just talk about her. She, she awesome. is amazing. Megan was her character. She played Kate, right? No, Megan. Oh, she played Megan. Yes. Okay. Melissa McCarthy. Oh, okay. Got yes. You. I just thought, I mean, she is just hilarious. She was very funny, and it was awesome that she actually ended up being the one who gave the best advice and the most calming advice, and also who kind of had like a something about her that you didn't expect because you know she was kind of raunchy and kind of real and you're like we kind of know who she is and then she surprised us at the end by coming in and being a real friend she was awesome i i agree like you know and and i have to say i've been in 11 weddings or so <laughs> i've lost track um this is a bridesmaid dress <laughs> as you know i tea. love the flower in the hair yes well, <laughs> That, you know, that's something funny I want to talk about about bridesmaids' dresses is there's always this, like, doodad. This was actually part of the bell. It was, like, had a pin around it. Uh-huh. And and you never know what to do with it. And I feel like every bridesmaid's dress, it's got, like, some sort of, like, belt or, like, a doodad or a, a shawl. And you're like, do I where do I put this? So right. I actually settled on this in my hair, and that's what I did for the wedding, and I liked it. Nice. But getting back to Megan, um... Yeah, I, I feel like almost every wedding I've been in, there there tends to be that character that's like the cousin or the groom's sister or, you know, that maybe doesn't isn't quite the same type of girl's girl. Right. But has that, like, interesting, maybe socially off thing going on. And um, I just, I loved how they captured that. I mean, to be oh, stereotypical, yeah. but like you said, then they went deeper with Megan and... Here she was. She was working for the government. She mm-hmm. was totally right about that guy on the plane. And you're thinking, <laughs> wow, she is over the top. But she's actually really intelligent. Oh, yeah. Very wealthy, we find out in that scene with her and mm-hmm. Annie. And then, yeah, she, she and then says she, she had makes a freak her... side. <laughs> exactly. The, the ankle fetish, the leg, the fall. Oh, back. my gosh. And then the, guy, the sandwich thing. Oh, that was so. Oh, my gosh. Gross, but. It was gross, but in a really romantic way. <laughs> because she, she, you just believed her, and you wanted her at that point to like get it on and go, she, girl. And, and this get guy it. loved it. He yeah. loved it. So I was like, yeah, you know what? There's something for everybody. It doesn't matter what you like, what you, you know. There's something for everybody. Don't judge. Don't judge. <laughs> and she, and she was, she had a confidence to her that I just loved, you know. And you know, then you find out um, Helen you know, is very insecure. So mm-hmm. it's it's interesting. She's beautiful and has yeah. it all together. But what I loved about Megan's character is, you know, she was really confident. And like you said, that scene where she was such a great friend, she, I think what she said was, I want you to fight for your life. I'm life. I'm life beating yeah. you down. Fight for your life. Fight for your life. And it, ugh, I remember you and I sitting next I to each other. That moment got us. Oh, yeah. That was that was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And I, and I love the point that you're making about her being, I mean, she's atypical as far as, you know, society's idea of beauty. She's a little overweight. She was really kind of real and raunchy, not really trying to put on any kind of airs whatsoever. She was just who she was. And then um, yeah. transpose that with the lead character, Annie, who is really thin and beautiful, you know, and and she had all these issues, all these major issues of self-confidence and all that kind of stuff. So it was really nice to see them do that, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I just, I thought each character, there's some characters I would have liked to see a little more. I think the movie was just so good and rich and the Mm -hmm. characterizations were so specific. Mm -hmm. You know that girl, you have that, you know, the girl who's really optimistic. Right. Um, um, What was her name? The girl who played Becca. Becca, yes. yes. Um, Ellie Kemper. Right. Yeah, and she was just like a newlywed and everything's perfect. We just got back from Disneyland <laughs> on our honeymoon. 
you're not married. I know. You know, and that that was so awkward. And that is something I know you and I have talked about that comes up at weddings. Oh yeah. Everyone wants to talk about engagement yeah, and so wedding. You're gonna get married. How old are you? It's like, um, <laughs> can we just party to? I'm sorry, uh, I just I will you. survive, please. Yeah. Isn't that what's supposed to be going on yes. here? Just play the music. Yeah. Let me dance it yeah. out, okay? <laughs> That's what I, that's my favorite part about weddings. I've I've actually never had the experience of being a bridesmaid. Always a a, a guest attendee, never a bride or a bride bridesmaid. Always but, a bridesmaid over here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but what I love about honestly, I go there to party, and and I don't mean like you know crazy party. I mean I love to go there and dance. You know, food is awesome. It's like free food. I love it. So I'm the person who's at the wedding when everybody else is gone. <laughs> you have to drag me out. Me too. I absolutely love weddings. <laughs> it is. I do. I really do get wrapped up in the fantasy. And just I love getting to know people. I feel like there's a lot of bonding that happens over a wedding weekend. I love getting to know people's families and seeing older couples in a family dynamics and mm -hmm. of course just it, it always makes me realize that we're all more the same than we're not you yeah. know and just the um little drama that goes on i know at least in my flavorful family at weddings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i wonder you know i wonder what it'd be like i mean of course they already did the movie the wedding crashers right. but i wonder what it would be like for women to be wedding crashers to you know go and just have fun and see what happens you know you know i i might be uh, up I, for that uh, might have done that <laughs> really i might have done that yes and, um, <laughs> um do you want to hear that story? i do want to hear that story yes i do well i have two actually my one cousin's wedding my brother and my other cousin we went and crashed the wedding next door so all night because and my my brother and my cousin were like the bridesmaids are hotter here <laughs> so i'm like cool they're like be our be our wing woman you know so we we would go back and forth all night and we had a blast we met a bunch of people from that wedding which was really funny i think there's sort of a bonding too like you're in the wedding party yeah we're in the wedding party too and right. just kind of what kind of appetizers you got over here you know did you have to make up whether you were friends of the groom or friends of the bride um no we never we it was actually part of the evening that people were uh happy and drunk enough to <laughs> be like come on in but I was in the Venice Canals with some friend, with some girlfriends of mine, and we had a friend in town that we were, that was visiting, mm -hmm. and we see this big party in this beautiful house in the canals, and uh, my other friend and I look at each other, we're like, "Just follow us." You know, we were <laughs> we were trying to like impress our friends from the East Coast, and um, all the guys were like, "Come on in, come on in." It was a wedding reception. Oh wow! And these girls were not having it. They were looking at us, and we were just like, "Hey." <laughs> and we left. We left. It wasn't uh, okay. So a that one didn't. One. That one wasn't a successful crash. <laughs> no. <laughs> you should have at least got some digits. Come on, Aaron. Yeah, we got, we got enough looks. That was, I, oh, got we it. Left, we left with that. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's talk about um the police officer. <gasps> he was Rhodes. adorable. Yes. He was so cute. Yes. It was breaking my heart when she would not. You know when she was not giving him the time of day. Oh, I know. And he was he was the sweetest thing ever. And he was it's like it was funny when he you finally saw him start to get interested in her. Like, you know, he's going to give her a ticket. Right. And he wasn't really going there. And then all of a sudden he realized that she baked these cakes and it was, oh, you're that girl. You're that. It's it's funny to see the chills. I know to see the light bulb go off, you know, in a guy's eyes when he's like, oh, and those, I, I, those cakes are fantastic that's you and then he started to look at her in a whole different way and she wasn't even aware at that time that he and was actually is, falling in love with her and there is <laughs> nothing sexier than a man you know it's like yeah he was probably attracted to her but what makes this character so great and him so charming and just sort of like the all-around guy yes men we want nice men we want that the nice guy will finish you know will finish last not well not you, you want a nice guy with a backbone absolutely right so yes. it's like it's like guys say well we don't want we don't want um girls don't want nice guys you guys walk all over nice guys and it's like no no we want nice guys who have a backbone we don't want jerks either you know what i mean yeah. there's a there's a middle ground just like a guy wants a middle ground you know we all have heard of the virgin horror complex right exactly. you don't want one or the other 
you kind of want a little bit of... A little bad boy. A little bit of yeah. like, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm not going to take your stuff. You want a little bit of salt with your sweet. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Salty and sweet at the same time. I mean, and, that, and that's the thing that was so sweet. Like you started to touch on is like, he was falling in love with her passion. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, she's a beautiful woman and he's attracted to her that, you know, and there's that. There's that, you know, surface stuff going on that's great and chemistry and beautiful. But... Yeah, he was, like, really into what her big passion was. Oh, yeah. And her cupcake. I mean, let's not, you know, a way to a man's a man. heart is, you know, is through the stomach. So he was definitely feeling the those cupcakes that she was making, you know. How about the scene where she wakes up after their first night together and he has all those ingredients on the counter? No, here's the funny part, right? So he wakes up, because you know we girls do this, right? We will stare at a guy. You know, we wake up and he's still sleeping and we're just like with him and we're hoping he don't don't wake up yet don't wake up. I just want to look at you you look so beautiful when you're just laying there we're so cheesy like that so so when she wakes up he's staring at her and he goes oh I, I haven't been doing this I, I just started <laughs> you know he's been there for five minutes looking yeah. at how beautiful she is sleeping so sweet I know that was and it just breaks it just broke my heart when she just walked out and got all freaked out about it we were all like, no, he's the good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she, I mean, it makes sense because a lot of times when, uh, you know, you have a history of dealing with, you know, guys who are not so cool, you don't want to trust, you know, your your uh, vulnerability has been out there for the wrong guy. So now you kind of don't believe what's, ha you're like, I don't know what you're trying to do here, but I'm not believing all this goodness that you're giving me right now. So then... So she, she freaked out. She, re she ran. And I also think, you know, I mean, we have all been through this. We've all dated guys that we should have broke up with months before. Mm -hmm. We've all gotten in relationships that linger on and on or gone on a bad date and he calls again and you don't have any anything else going on. Your girlfriends are all dating or have boyfriends right. or married. And you're like, okay, yeah, but we're just going to go to dinner. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of times it's a reflection of what you're ready for, what you, oh, you know, yeah. you want for yourself, well, maybe how you're feeling about yourself at the time. And mm -hmm. I think that he, ter Rhodes terrified Annie. Oh, he totally terrified Especially her. where she was, you know, the way she's feeling about herself. Her best friend was leaving okay. her. Okay, can I just say the best way to open a film? <laughs> that crazy, raunchy. raunchy. Not Hot, that sexy, funny, right? Sex scene. <laughs> oh, that, like um, five reasons why she probably shouldn't be with that guy. Yes. Right? I mean, they were hilarious. That is such a great way to make a sex scene. It was just like hard. It's like, okay, are we? is this sex or are we making love here? Sex, making love. Transpose the, the night before, you know, the night with uh, Rhodes. Yeah. And then the... Well, I actually never, for me, I didn't see any moments of making love. It, it was sort it was what I loved about that scene. Besides oh, you're talking the about the, with the, the guy who we don't, you know, the, the jerk, right? Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't any. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And what I loved about that, too, was because I didn't know where that was going to go. It's like, okay, he's a, he's really hot. He's a nice looking man. And he's and it's funny, right. but you almost thought she's like, that's it. This is the last time I'm going to see him. And then to see, and women, we do this, to see... This was horrible sex, but she's trying to hang on. She's going to stick around, you know? Awful. It was awful. Oh, yeah. And, okay, women, clue. When a guy, after he's made love to you in the morning, literally says, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I really want you to go. Uh -uh. That's a clue that, that he's bad. just not that into you, okay? I mean, who would even say that? You know, you who does that? Um, it's, It happens. <laughs> Do not tell me that has happened to you. No. Oh, thank you. No, it hasn't. <laughs> I was about to kick you under the table. No, <laughs> no but I've I've actually uh, had yeah I've had friends that that's happened to. And please tell me they didn't date him again. It was over. I, I, it was over. I, I, yeah. It was over. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, okay. I, it wasn't that blatant. That you know that scene was very like blatant, but funny now that's one of those heartbreaking funny scenes yeah. where it's um no, I, I would call that a moment of dark comedy where he, he i mean when a guy looks at you he just he kisses you and then says mm, yeah i really feel like you know don't take this the wrong way but i want you to go <laughs> i don't know how to say this <laughs> and then he just says it he just says it yeah and how about the scene where he drives up and Rhodes? oh we were dying remember when Rhodes? <sighs> 
When he drives up, he's like, hey, what's up, fuck buddy? And Rhodes is like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I thought that was the best reaction because he's like, this is a moment Some of that where, backbone yeah, coming in that you like, right? That's right. The backbone for Rhodes comes in because he's like, this is the guy? This is the guy that you've been hanging with? And let, yet you kick me to the curb and treat me like this? A guy who drives up and says, what's up, fuck buddy? <laughs> right? Really? Really? Ugh. He was, he was, uh, that was the most genuine male response I've seen. He just went, all this pause, and then he just went, really? <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> I know. I just love him. One thing I love about the Rhodes character, which is uh, played by Chris O'Dowd, mm -hmm. he's from Ireland. And I love that they didn't mention it. They mentioned it once, and they said, uh, she's like, oh, I didn't know you could be a police officer when right. you're not an American citizen. But other than that, it's almost like they were making fun of it, you know, mm -hmm, like, make, mm -hmm. but I love that they just like let it be. And he, I just love his charm. I thought he was fantastic. And the scene, then when she got the montage of her driving by with Helen trying oh, to get his attention. that was so funny. That yeah. was really actually brilliant writing. And I wonder how much of that was improv, because I know a lot of the movie was impro improvisation. Yeah, and a lot the, of the girls are UCB and Groundlings girls, and they've known each other. Exactly. And, and the improvs were fantastic. I mean, her improv on the plane when she was drunk, and also all the improv that was going on with the driving by mm -hmm. scene. I mean, they came up with some really funny, funny gags, right? Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, I, I read that um, they they were improving for weeks while they were writing. So they, really? they did have a script, but a lot of it was based on the the girls improving together and guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> we oh, never yeah. forget the guys. I wonder because uh, in what about the um, the 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 girl who was trying to steal Maya Rudolph, trying to steal the best friend. Maya Rudolph, of course, was the best friend. What's her character's name again? Helen. Helen. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. um, and she's Australian, by the way. She is? Yeah. I did not is know Is it Rose that. Byrne? Yes. Yeah, so uh, it, have you, I mean, we all have been, you know, in a situation where our best friend, now there's a new girl in the picture, and all of a sudden our best friend is spending all her time with this new girl, and we're like, who is this girl? You don't know her. Why are you acting like you've been with her forever? You know, that's a dynamic in being in wed all the weddings that I've been in. You know, there is this slight tug of, like, these different sections of your life, you know, and clearly I, I love that whole aspect of um, Annie and Lillian knowing each other, you know, back in the 80s when right. they were younger and stuff. Right. And and there is this tug of like, but you're her college best friend and you're right. the high school best friend. And well, we're at work together now, you know, mm -hmm. we're, she's an adult now. This, you know, and Helen was pulling a lot of that of. You know, we go drinking at the every weekend and all that. And I've, I've had to deal with that. Like, I, I moved out to Los Angeles with uh, my best friend, and then she was doing a lot of, uh, she was bi-coastal mostly, so she'd be off in New York for several months. So, of course, I had to make new friends, right? So when, when she came back, she would be like, okay, so can we do this or this? And I'd be like making plans with my new friends and it became yeah. it was really crazy because she you know she's like my sister yeah but you know I had to make new friends she you know wasn't around and it was like trying to sometimes the friends didn't quite gel you know it's like they didn't have the same interests and they sort of uh some friends I did these things with but this friend didn't like to do those th oh it's, it's crazy you know we women deal with a lot with all of our friendships yeah. trying to make it all work and balance that's why it's good we're good with men yes <laughs> yes we're very good at multitasking that's correct men keep it simple no, that's hey true. dude what's that's up <laughs> let's grab a beer exactly when yeah. they're quiet it doesn't mean that they're not thinking about you <laughs> right exactly well actually I think it does mean that they're not thinking about you I think that's exactly Exactly. It's like, yeah, no, everything's good. I'm not thinking exactly. about you in the relationship. There's no problem. Yeah. We're good. But we're like, he's quiet. What does he mean? What's he thinking? Does he not love me anymore? Yeah. Talk and to you, me. <laughs> you know, I think I think what this movie really did for me is like I think friendships are so much like relationships too. Mm -hmm. In the sense that like what you're saying about girlfriends, you know, it's like um there are times where you're really close with one of your best friends. I remember um one of my best friends when we first met, we kept joking that we were dating because it was like that giddiness of, oh, yeah. oh my gosh. And when you and I first, do you remember mm -hmm. our first date, Tamika? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like a, 
what, six-hour coffee date or it something? Was a, it was crazy. It was a six-hour coffee date, and I remember we both kept standing up from the table going, Go. no! Oh, oh my, my gosh, God. I can't believe it. What, you do? It was kismet. It was awesome. It was like, I would marry you if you were yeah. a guy right now. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> totally. And, and I think that that's so... I love that about my girlfriends that, mm -hmm. yeah, especially, you know, your close friends. And then, yeah, then there's there's times where you're not as close and you're busy or you're living in different cities now. And, you know, when I moved from New York to Los Angeles, some of my bestest friends that I saw every day or at least spoke to the few few close friends that I had, um, they, they changed. And there, there's yeah. some dynamic there that changes and I don't think it's like, I think it's more just like shifting and growing. And, and I, you see that in Bridesmaids. Oh, yeah. And you see them trying to maneuver the differences. It's like, even though this new girl is in the picture and she's a little crazy, <laughs> she's a little crazy. Um, you don't have to necessarily choose, choose. They're always, their relationship is always going to be foundationally a best friend relationship, you know. And then you can invite new people in and just see what that balance is like. You don't have to do everything with all of your friends, you know what I right. mean? So they sort of, you know, set that up. But you do have to kind of watch for those girls who are trying to steal your best friend. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm, not, yeah. no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> No, I was just, I was at a wedding where, you know, it's like being in, being in a bridesmaid, um, I've been a maid of honor once and, you know, I try to be very diplomatic and democratic and, hey guys, here are my ideas, send me yours, you know, it's right. mix it. And then, you know, at some point someone has to make a decision and you kind of see that happen in bridesmaids where they're, she wants to go to the cat, the cabin right. for a nice calm Oh weekend. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and then the Helen vetoes it and does the whole Vegas thing and all that. Right. But you know, drugs her. What's that? Drugs her and drugs her on the plane. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so funny. And I I think most of that was her own character improv. You know, when she was all drugged and she came back and she's like, oh, you know, she was. Her character was so on the money when it comes to like, you know, being drugged and um, trying to communicate in first class, first class thing, because we've all dealt with first class. Okay, we're sitting in coach. They close those curtains and we're like, really? We can't use the bathroom right. in first class? Right. Really? And she really kind of um, accentuated how rude they are. Yeah. And with, with, even if there's empty seats, you really can't sit up here. You can't use the bathroom. And we're going to call the cops if you come through these <laughs> curtains. <laughs> that was really cool. That was so funny. And did you know that um, the writer, Annie Mamolo is the nervous woman on the plane who is sitting next to... Kristen Wiig in that no. scene. No. That is the co-writer. Oh, that's the co-writer. Oh, yeah. okay. She was really mm -hmm. good. She was yeah. excellent yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed seeing her in that scene, too. Mm-hmm. Um, should we go to a commercial break? Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's go to a commercial break. And um, before we go, we wanted to share with you uh, Maya Angelou's poem, What Every Woman Should Have. And there's two parts to it, What Every Woman Should Have and What Every Woman Should Know. So we're going to give you What Every Woman Should Know at the end of our segment. So uh, let's start with what, what Every Woman Should Have. Enough money within her control to move out and rent a place of her own, even if she never wants or needs to. Very important. Mm -hmm. A woman should have something perfect to wear if the employer or date of her dreams wants to see her in an hour. Yes, and that means something fabulous, women. Yes. <laughs> okay. Splurge, have That's it pressed, right. have it cleaned. Exactly. Be ready to go. A woman should have a youth she's content to leave behind. <laughs> yes. A woman should have a past juicy enough that she's looking forward to retelling it in her old age. Yes, and every other chance that she can. <laughs> a woman should have a set of screwdrivers, a cordless drill, and a black lace bra. I got to get working on that cordless yeah. drill. <laughs> I have some shopping to do, too. Okay. <laughs> a woman should have one friend who always makes her laugh and one who lets her cry. And, of course, Aaron does both of those things for me. You do both of those <laughs> things for me, too, sometimes at the same time. That's correct. She's the best. <laughs> I love that. Uh, a woman should have a good piece of furniture not previously owned by anyone else in her family. Mm. I bought one of, a big, beautiful table when I first got to L.A., and I still have it. It's got mirrors on it. It's awesome. Nice. A woman should have eight matching plates, wine glasses with stems, and a recipe for a meal that will make her guests feel honored. 
Oh, yes. And that means that, you know, uh, does that mean we have to replace them when they're broken? Because I think I'm about three in right now. <laughs> and does that mean we have to learn to cook? Uh, ooh. <laughs> That's a whole nother topic. Yes. And a woman should have a feeling of control over her own destiny. Awesome. So Beautiful. with that, let's go to a commercial. Want to find out what the after buzz is about? Janice is a drama queen. This yeah. is the divide that is going to carry the series. Give us a call. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. This television and they want it to be as dramatic as possible. I mean, it's Shakespeare. You never know what goes on behind closed doors. Find out why After Buzz TV is the number one source for after show content. Now, in the eyes of Jimmy... Nucky is a villain. 424-256-1729. 424-256-1729. Four, two, four, two, I mean, who would you guys rather hear that from? Your husband or your best friend? <laughs> the wig! The wig no, will come that wig. When the TV show is over, get your after buzz on. Hey, ladies. We're back. And gentlemen... We hope you're behind every good woman is a great man supporting her. Absolutely. And loving her. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just wanted to let you know about this book by Maria Menounos, The Every Girl's Guide to Life. Go out, buy it. It has... Um, Talks about saving money, organizations, you know, working beauty, out. friends. Oh, it's awesome. You really should get that book. Yes. Yeah. It's, so, it's going to be on my bookshelf. We're, share, we're sharing That's it. right. Best friend share, but I think I've had it a little bit longer than her. I, I got to get, get reading through the last chapter. So probably, you know, I think if they, she, just, just as a note, if they had that book, they might have got through that wedding a little bit easier. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Organization, friendships, weight loss, all of that. Good yes. stuff. Yes. Live well and be happy. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, I wanted to talk about, like, I mean, we talked a little bit about marriages on friendships and stuff like that, but I actually did want to talk about loneliness, um, you know, because if you're the the best friend who's not getting married, right, then your relationship is going to automatically change because your your best friend is spending all her time with her new man and she doesn't have time for you and you want to be happy for her. But it's like, okay, I don't have a movie buddy anymore. Um, I don't have a buddy to go out and have dinner anymore. It's like... You know, and she's all happy, and all she wants to talk about is him. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to talk about me. <laughs> and us. And us. That's right. And the cute waiter. That's correct. <laughs> so there is, like, a certain amount of loneliness that sets in, a loss, right? Because a, a whole loss. different Definitely relationship loss. starts. It starts to transform, you know, your friendship in a different way. What do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I've had a lot of transitions like that. Um, sort of an ebb and flow. My best friend, who I was her maid of honor, I actually knew her f her husband. I guess I was like eleven. I met him in youth group, and I knew her when I was fourteen. Right. And then um, his best friend and I dated in high school briefly, and so you know we'd all been in each other's lives for a long time, and it is an interesting dynamic, you know, as as her husband is her best friend, you know, they that that happens and. That's but it. we're that's... still best friends, you know. I mean, the word "best friend" is sort of I, I don't I don't. It, it's hard to put labels on relationships with people that you love because I don't think it's like one best friend, right? You know, and then your husband or your boyfriend, your life partner, they're in in essence your best friend, but you know you can't be replaced. You know, I think in the end you kind of have to know that that each of your friends and your relationships serves a different purpose. But yeah. there is that transition that goes on, you know. And I have another other two friends that I actually fixed up and both of them were close friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning of the relationship, they would both call me for advice. And I'd say, oh, talk to each other, talk to each other. And I'd push them closer together. But there was some loss there for me with both of those friendships as well, you know, as they grew closer and Absolutely. didn't need to make the calls as much. Absolutely. And, you know, that um, that is something that we, you know, as we all deal with those transitions, it's like um, uh, it's something that I think that, uh, it lands on everybody differently, right? right? So, like with me, even with you know, you know, you start dating a new guy. It's like I can't get a hold of my friend, and I want and and mm. and you do want to and and it's you don't want to like um, rain on their parade. If they want to talk about the guy, they want to talk about the guy. But then sometimes you're like, you know what? You talk about X. 
A hundred percent. I know you're of talking about me, Tamika. <laughs> Can we talk about something else? No, I'm just, I shouldn't know. You know I'm not talking about you. Maybe well, in the beginning. My period, Maybe I in the beginning, yes, where it's like all about him. Yes. It's like, you know what, ladies? Take it down about 10. And you know, <laughs> yeah. on our date, Tamika and I had a date when we went and saw Bridesmaids. Actually, Tamika's, Tamika had a birthday oh, yeah. that we were celebrating her birthday. So <laughs> we had a date, and I actually was thinking, Tamika and I used to talk every day. And I was kind of thinking about some of the transitions with our friendship. I mean, now we live next door to each other. We're, right. we're neighbors. <laughs> we, I we made man, that happen. <laughs> we manipulated my boyfriend into moving next door to her. And, so, now, and he was jealous of the date. He was like, wait a minute. He was jealous of our date. <laughs> we haven't done a movie and a uh, dinner in ages. I know. And then we saw him going as we were coming <laughs> out. And I got all dressed up for that. He's like, she dressed up for the date? You guys are going on a date? And you're taking her to dinner and a movie? Uh-uh. <laughs> what about our dinner? And I was like, don't even try it. You have her every day. <laughs> and I think it's so important for girls to go on dates together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I do feel this transition, you know, I uh, I guess in my mid-20s, I went, there was like wedding, 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 wedding. And, you know, when you're in your wherever age we're in, <laughs> um, there it seems like everyone's married or coupled up and stuff. And right. I think it's so important to do those girls' nights and take your girlfriends on dates and mm -hmm. just like have a, I remember we had a slumber party last year that was oh, so yeah. fun. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. That yeah, was awesome. and there is that transition that, that happens. And, and even with guys, you know, I actually do understand that guys go through this, um, It's kind of, I call it the rage against the machine period where they're, you know, they're going to get, you know, about to get married. Rage against the machine, like, okay. Um, and everything is kind of, they're, they're um, you know, sort of rebelling against everything. And it's like, they still love you. It's just like, they're just trying to carve a little bit of their freedom, but within the boundaries of a, that they're about to get married and lose the majority of their freedom. So I totally understand like having the space, giving guys the space to have nights out with the guys. And I'm like, yeah, do go that. do it. Please do it. <laughs> I mean, you need to have it's your space. Healthy. It's important, yeah. So they can, you know, c commune with the natives, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and it's healthy for, for your friendships as well. That's probably a way that you can kind of, um, uh, ease into those transitions when you know with guys and girls when you're in the relationship just make sure you carve out time for your best friends and your girlfriends and stuff like that so you don't lose yourself in the relationship right guys are less likely to do that but we we kind of do that sometimes definitely yeah yeah definitely you know and I, and I want to um, talk a little bit about you know the, some of the weddings I've been in or even just I know you've been to a ton of weddings mm -hmm. It's, it's like, here's this best friend of yours or close friend or someone you worked with for a couple of years. I mean, people that were like a part of your life and your right. journey, right, and who you are. And sometimes they're joining their life, marrying someone that you don't even know. You right. know, have you had that happen? I have. You know, I so, have. and and let's talk about that. I mean, I mean, you know, there's two you... things with that because there, you know, you want to support it, and in one way you can support it, and I and I I can only support it because I know people who've done it, and their relationship has lasted, right? And then I've known people who've done it, and it has not done what gotten married to somebody they don't know that well, right? Oh, you're saying okay, you're saying that you know people who got married fast. Yeah, they got yeah. married very fast, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, uh, okay, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I kind of believe, but it helps you to believe in the magic when it does work, right? And so you know, it's like. You go to the wedding, you know they've only known each other for six months or a year, and everybody's like talking against it, and then that mar that marriage is actually successful. But you know the, the other happens as well, where you're like, uh, I don't want to say I told you so, but uh, <laughs> we all knew that wasn't gonna work. That sucks, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and um, and I also think, like you said, there are no rules because right. I have. I won't get into specifics, but I have, you know, weddings I've been in where the couples are divorced. And mm. um, recently I had a friend whose wedding that I, I had been in a few years ago and she was leaving her husband. And I just felt I, I sort of all of a sudden got this like code of honor of like, well, I was her bridesmaid, so I need to like make sure this is the right thing. Right. And I, I said that to her. I said, you know, I, when you asked me to be in your wedding, I took it really seriously that I would stand behind you in your marriage. Mm -hmm. And. I just want you to be happy and um you know so it was sort of interesting but also to be there as a friend i think you know being a bridesmaid and being a friend is you really just want your friend to be happy ultimately that's what it is you, know? you just want them to be happy yeah and 
And there's this sort of like window of time. Um, another wedding that I was in, um, there was some dislike of the groom. Right, right. Going on, uh, you know, before the wedding on the for the brides for the bridesmaids, more just, um, uh, you know, he had cheated on her in uh, in the past, and it was okay. in the past. Okay. So you're, you know, we're adults, and it's like, wh what's that timeline? You know, now they're planning a wedding, and do you say something? And but you're one of the best friends, you know. Right. And, how do you, you know, and I, you know, the way I always handle is like, you know, pick the best time possible, be upfront, mm -hmm. but really, really, you know, you just want to see your friend happy. And there are no rules. I believe in forgiveness. Yes. I believe in, you know, that's actually maybe the best thing you can go through is something like traumatic that needs forgiveness and, and healing. That's the same with friendships. We saw that in, in, in Bridesmaids. There was a, a huge theme of forgiveness with the friends as well as with Annie and, and Rhodes because he had to f forgive her for going crazy on him. You know what I mean? So yeah, and, forgiveness. And Annie had huge. to forgive herself. And she had to forgive herself. That was one of the biggest themes. You're right. She I had think to forgive Megan, herself. The scene with Megan maybe sort of started that process oh yeah yeah and, and and honestly i think she had to forgive the jerk and in order to let him go right. right so it was a whole different it was a different kind of forgiveness but she she had to forgive him and let that whole relationship go as well and um you know i was thinking about forgiveness as far as re just in general finding a soulmate and things like that and um i just wanted to talk about some of the things that we you know that you actually look for in a mate in a soulmate i mean i don't even know if there is one soulmate yeah. like my my ideas about you. that yeah. have kind of changed like i think Me you too. can have a lot of soulmates and then you choose the one who best represents everything that it is that you want in your life right and then that's the person you choose. So when you choose that person, you commit to that, and that's your soulmate that you've chosen to be with. But I would think it would be kind of sad if you only had one soulmate. What if that person gets hit by a bus? Gosh forbid, but I'm just saying, and you're like alone the rest of your life, you don't have any other people who you feel that connection to. So that's just my personal opinion about it. But I, I, I think I'm a, I used to believe like, you know, the fantasy of this one love for sight, one right, person right, right. only. But I think you're one of my soulmates, you know? I have. Mm -hmm. close girlfriends mm -hmm. that you just like that buzz when you first meet that six hour conversation and you're mm -hmm. like we were made from the same you know soul group so soul pool of we are beings. soul sisters soul sisters ebony and ivory but we're soul sisters <laughs> oh, Peppa, baby. that's right both taste nice and spicy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think that um and now i think that i think things are meant to be i, I sort of like believe in the paradox of life you mm -hmm. know that it's it's a bunch of choices that we make right and we can choose our soulmate like you said or mm -hmm. we can choose to let that soulmate go and hopefully i don't think it, i don't think soulmates come every day i, I think it's that. a rare occurrence but mm -hmm. i do think we get a couple of uh choices. encounters during life and um i think that to something to look for in a soulmate is honesty and teamwork Mm -hmm. and patience um acceptance acceptance is good and and again i'll say forgiveness and understanding because i mean nobody's you know perfect i mean we're all perfect in our imperfections exactly right but we're we're all going to make mistakes and um it's sort of like not harping on the mistake right there was a story once about um how these people uh it, it was these two friends and they were going along the way and you know something bad would happen right and um uh the other friend would draw uh, something in the, you know, would write it in the sand, right? Something every bad that this other friend did, they would draw it uh, in the sand. You've heard this, right? Yeah, Before. yeah. And then another thing happened. He wrote what he did in the sand, right? And then the other friend did something really wonderful, and he carved it in stone. Uh, and he was like, you know, um, you know, I just don't want to harp on or leave permanent the bad things that you did, but I do want to remember the good things that you've done right? right and I think that's you know probably how we sh you know for relationships if you want to actually have a relationship that is sustainable you can't um, always just harp on the negative right it's got to be you know thinking about all the amazing things as compared to the because you could turn um, I had this uh, coach once tell me she said she was married and for a long time like 30 years and she said wow. I can turn my husband into a frog at the drop of a hat or I can wow. turn him into Prince Charming at the drop of a hat. I absolutely you know what I mean? believe that. I believe every day you wake up and you choose your relationships. Mm -hmm. You choose your boyfriend, your partner, your wife, your husband. You choose your friends and your you choose your 
family and your mom, you know, and you make that choice and you just, and you choose to see the best in each other. Because I also think the way you perceive other people is how you're perceiving yourself. Right. You know, I know in times where I'm, my relationship is maybe, you know, up, upside down feeling. It's just really, it usually is a reflection of how I'm feeling with myself. Right. And um, sometimes people just get on your nerves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes people just do some stuff. Sometimes it's that time of month. Right. <laughs> Sorry, babe. So I'm not trying to say that, you know, there isn't some stuff that you have no, to negotiate. We all know that No, I think is. it's the building, the building blocks are there. I mean, obviously, you know, music, books. We're people are writing about love and relationships till the end of time. Oh, you yeah. know, and yeah. So it is not a it is not a black and white <laughs> issue. Pun intended. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, but um, some of the other things that I think that make a good what I look what I've begun to look for now because before I used to say to people like I had a you know the boyfriend in high school he was like a perfect boyfriend right and I was like but what did I expect of him? I just expected him to call me. I expected him to take me to the prom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Simple. It was like very, very simple. We didn't even know who each other, you know, who we were. Right. And now, you know, I'm a, a, just a tad bit older, just a few years older. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm like, well, you Couple know, there are other pen. things. Yeah. Like I, I want to, um, there's responsibility and accountability. I mean, those are like, you know, big words and relationships and stuff. But it's just, you know, acknowledging when you've done something and cleaning it up. It's, you know, the forgiveness is there. I always say, you know, the X factor for me is that the forgiveness is going to automatically be there, right? Right. I just need you to own up to it, right? right. Just like I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, just communicate, right? And speak about what's there. And with friends, yeah. too. I mean, Oh, I've we've had, had our we've had our little moments. You and I, oh my we've gosh. had our, <laughs> and you know, I remember when we had our first big blowout, I, I was so excited, you know, um, you know, Jeremy, my boyfriend, said, are you guys, are you okay? And I said, oh, I'm so excited. Why? Why? I said, we got through it. And doesn't, we're not ever going to get divorced. Exactly. You know, you exactly. have friends. I've had friend divorces, you know, where it's mm -hmm. like you don't make it through that rough patch. And if you don't, I feel like that that's part of it. I don't want to use the word testing, but but I think I have to because it's like if it hasn't been tested, then I don't know if you know if it's real. It's still like in a in a. In almost an inauthentic stage, right? Because you haven't seen, um, you haven't gone through anything with the, the person to know. Yeah, yeah, you haven't gone through the storm, and so that's when that's why like people say with marriages and stuff like that, you know, they get to a certain point. If you can get past that, you can get past the, you know, that's it. That's a test, right? All that honeymoon stage, even with friendships and stuff. I mean, my, my best friend that I was, the, my yeah. other best friend yeah. that I was telling you about from uh, who lives in New York. But you like me better, right? <laughs> just kidding. On Sunday. Uh -huh. no, just kidding. No, you know, you put, yeah, of course I like you better because you're here. <laughs> That is such kidding. a guy I would answer. Never oh my gosh, that was such a guy answer. Yeah, girl. <laughs> that was my um my male energy coming Ooh. out. <laughs> but, I smell some testosterone all of a sudden. <laughs> right? I don't know how I feel about it. But yeah, but it's like, you know, when uh when you're dealing with your with your friends, what was my train of thought? I lost it. We were just talking about um Going through storm. Oh yes, going through the storm. And so yeah, and we went through something really major. What I, I remember. did not think we were going to recover from, and I'm, you know, I'm glad we went through that because now we can actually be real with each Absolutely. other. We can say anything to each other. We know that we can recover from it. We can be really honest and authentic. And even though there was a level of that before, when you go through something like this, you see the real, you know, you see people sometimes in their lowest vibration because that's what happens when you're around somebody long enough, right? Yeah. And you hope that they can forgive you, that you can forgive them, and that you guys can get past it, and you know that that is not who that person is. That's Absolutely. just something that happened, And, right? you know, that, that aspect of forgiveness and friendship and, you know, going through a storm in Bridesmaids with Annie and Lillian. Oh, yeah. That scene where, you know, it's, she can barely get married because she's like, it's just not the same without you. Aww. And in the end, even with relationships, you know, it's like, what does it come down to? You know, what's more important to you? Do you want to be right? Do you want to have your way? Do you want to look good? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to just be with that person? You know, right. the possibility of love and fun and self-expression it's not easy, you know, relationships, friendships, they take some work sometimes, they take some tending, we're all dealing with our stuff, but it's mm -hmm. also like, 
it's like, do you want that person in your life? Whether do you it's want your to be friend. right or do you want to have the relationship? There's a lot of lonely people walking around who are right who are all the right time and who look good. <laughs> well, I was right about that, and it's like unhappy because they would have preferred to, to be anymore. with that person, right? right? All you had yeah. to do is do a little compromise, or you know, sometimes even when you're right, it, you can just let it go. You know what I mean? I know I'm right about that, but it's not as important as me communicating with this person and talking to them. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, and um, I also just think, you know, it, it's it's easier for me to say this on the outside, but, you know, anytime you can try to think about what it's like to be in someone else's shoes and, you know, yeah. I, that's what I loved about the character Helen is that, you know, she wasn't just this, like, perfect, gorgeous girl that everyone hated. Right. You you saw hints in, in her acting. The acting in Bridesmaids was just yeah. from top they to bottom. They were fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All the girls. But with her character, what I liked about it was that you see this little bubbling of insecurity that you're kind of like, yeah, God, she's perfect. But I don't want to be her. Right. You know, and then at the end, she really just gets really vulnerable. And mm -hmm. I really felt for her character I did and too. just was like, I did you too. know, and I love I was like, I know she's gorgeous and a perfect 10, <laughs> has everything. And then yeah. you go, know, actually, she doesn't have everything. Yeah. And all she really wants is a, a friend. friend. And, you know, and, and then. And Annie and Lillian, they just had that. They yeah. just like that's just there. You know? How could she not be attracted to their deep friendship and want that for herself? And she didn't know how to go about it in any other way. So she used what she had. Yeah, she used clothes yeah, and money and clothes and money and all that kind of stuff and a little sneakiness. You <laughs> know, and that's what I love about girls. I think girls can really come together. And you know, I liked that Annie was actually really sweet to her at the end, even though she wanted to, you know, kill her. Right. And, uh, right. But I think that it's important for women to really, you know, stick together and kind of. I see. think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not in a, you know, I know men. You know, men forgive on a. It's weird. I think they forgive in a different way. Like I don't think they have to talk it out or hug it out or cry it out. None of that right. kind of stuff. But I think sometimes there's a quiet forgiveness that happens with uh, men, and it's almost like some stuff will go unsaid and then there'll just be a phone call and they meet up somewhere for a beer. And, and they don't even really talk about it. It's just back to the way things are and it's understood that we won't do that again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've seen that happen. I'm like, ama and I'm like amazed by that. You know what I, I mean? I want to know more what? about this. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I grew up with brothers and I do feel, I think you're right. I don't, but I, I feel like that my that there's some broken friendships that maybe you know, it could kind of go either way. You know, it's like they don't talk about it and then right. it's just done. Or like you said, you're right, that phone call and it's just like the game's on, you want to go. Right, and it's like an automatic quiet forgiveness with the guys, which I kind of like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, women, it's like, it's they. there's some completion for us. For I speak for myself. There's mm -hmm. some completion, there's some relief that I got it all out. Maybe I didn't yeah. get it out in the best way possible. Maybe I should have slept on it a little bit. Yeah, you know, I don't think <laughs> the best way possible is to wreck the uh, engagement for when the party. Oh was my it the gosh, the shower. Oh, the shower. Oh my gosh. The cookie. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she was, Annie was ridiculous, okay? She was ridiculous. I couldn't believe. The tickets believe. to Paris. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. That was such a good, but she was like, she totally blew a gasket. Yeah. It was so funny. And oh, and then the dogs. It was like so over the top. The wedding, the wedding uh, oh, party the puppies for puppies with that berets. Was crazy. <laughs> and how about the invitation to the shower? The butterfly oh. coming out? <laughs> no, I, I have to admit, I did like that butterfly. I know it was over the top. I but was like, um, animal protection, really? <laughs> extinction uh, association. But yes, that's no, just like. It was a, great. Oh, yeah, yeah. So creative. A little over the top, but yes, yes. So yeah, you, that's what I think is so funny, too. I mean, talk like all the, all the weddings that I've been in. I'm one of those girls. I could go either way, but I'm one of those girls. I love the games. I like the penis straws. I think I've got a box somewhere. I've had friends say, you should write a book about, you know, being a bridesmaid and stuff like that. It's just fun. I think the point of, like, having showers and the bachelorette party, the best bachelorette parties that I've been on are where we got to spend time together. Yeah. Please. Girls do not want to go to a male strip club. No. The male strip club I've well, been to. I, I, was I know some girls do. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, go for it, I'm girl. not saying me. I'm th- I'm I was a musical saying. theater major. I was around those men plenty. I don't need to be uh, have, being with men that have larger chests than me. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> you are wrong for that. Sorry, sorry. Now I'm getting in. Now I'm really, really getting raunchy here. But I actually am. Um, I, I will admit I have been to both versions. You know, I've been to a party where it's like, uh, you know, the men with the stripping and all that. And it, it was one guy coming in and I, I did the dance and they were taking pictures. And all of a sudden in the middle of some um, rather yoga-ish pose with the guy. What? I, <laughs> I thought, Hello. somebody just took a picture. Um, I might be running for office one day. <laughs> Get off me! Get off me! <laughs> Like, I mean, you oh have to, I'm goodness. just saying, I've been to the raunchy ones, and I've also been to the really nice, dainty ones. We're all sitting around talking, Having and, and those and are cool, and... too. Yeah, those yeah. are nice. It's, you know, I, the extremes are okay, you know, but maybe a balance, right? Maybe a guy can come in and dance where we don't really get to touch him. Yeah. No, there's defi- there Unless definitely. Unless that guy be a is Lenny ground. Kravitz. No, I'm just kidding. You had to bring it up again. She can't stop talking about him. Someone sent me this video of Lenny I know, Kravitz I can't for wait my to watch birthday. It. It's called uh, uh, Oh, I Belong to You. And he's like dancing. It's like him the whole time dancing on this video. I was like, okay, is he married yet? What? What's going on? Talk about <laughs> weddings. I'd like to have one. No, okay, so here we are, Tamika. It's your, it's your wedding with Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Describe it to me. What, how, what, where oh do you want to go? Because I need to know these things. Your shower. Well, you know, honestly, I'd like to have. He has an island. I think I forget the name of it, right? So I'm like, we can totally have. You know, this is terrible because you know I am seeing someone. <laughs> but, okay. Oh, sorry. This is no, a fantasy, this is fantasy, high- fantasy, fantasy, fantasy. Okay, so Lenny, Lenny, you can me, come. We're on, <laughs> we're on our island, and um, I've created my dress, and uh, it's kind of you know I'm a Southern belle. I'm from Virginia. Yeah. So I actually like those like big balloony kind of dresses. I, so, I know. I'm You're so know, beautiful. Right? I so see you. There. I'm not I'm not that, you know, LA, you know, sleek. I like the big balloony dress oh, that's yeah. really pretty princess. and princess like. So it would be like that even though it's on an island, I know. But maybe I should have my uh bathing suit and stuff on. Maybe I have so I layers. Can just, we can just like yeah, snap some zippers. I and... like it. I like it. But um but you know what? I actually like simple. I would like to jump the broom because that's like an old school, you know, African, you know, the kind of thing, you know, well, actually African-American that was created. I won't go to the history of it, but I'd like to jump the broom. And I'd just like it to be low key, low key with my friends and family on an island with Lenny. (laughs) But you know what? Speaking of dresses, that dress was horrendous. <laughs> oh, which one? The wedding one? Yes, the wedding yes. one that she hated that they had sent away to have made, right? And then she was forced to wear it during the wedding because it was too late to do anything else. It had like 10 layers on it. It was kind of I- icky. <laughs> yeah, you know, I so, I so often think about the, the price tag that comes with just the word wedding, that W word. It's like, whether it's a bridesmaid, you know, a dress that you wear once. You know, I've tried to wear some of my bridesmaid dresses more than right. once and have right. had some success. Right. But, you know, and a wedding dress and just, like, the prices of things and the flowers and it's, it's everything is just, like, jacked up. Well, my brother and his uh, wife did it at City Hall. She was like, I don't want all that pomp and circumstance. And he's like, neither do I. And I think also, it you know, it'd been a while. So she's like, oh, you're ready? Let's just go do it right now. I don't have time to plan. Yeah. He might change, he might his, change mind. his mind. Let's, Let's just hop in a cab. Priorities. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. We could do like something big after, right? After the deal is sealed, right? But um, but yeah, sp- weddings can be ridiculously high, right? I don't think that I want to. I think I'd rather put a down payment on a house. Yeah, you, you know, know what I mean. You know what the trend I see that I love on um, just in my course of being a bridesmaid is people really making weddings more their own, more homegrown. Um, you know, we went to a wedding of uh two of um. Jeremy's great friends from mm-hmm. college who are now my great friends. And we were really, we were like painting things and we were just helping out, helping with like the um, table cards and stuff. And there, I love that. I love just like being more a part of it, more hands on, mm-hmm. more homegrown and like personal to who they are. And I just, you know, I see that happening. So you, you guys were helping to paint. The... Oh, sorry. We were painting. They were like, because I'm getting visions of Amish. <laughs> No, we were we, all came we were to build painting. the house and painting. Yeah, yeah, we were building the house that they will live in forever with ten children. No, we were painting like 
um, signs, just like signs, uh, quotes that were going up the driveway when you come oh, in. They got married by a body so of water. Sweet. I love that. So there was that, and then I was like stamping. Um, they made their own stamp. They're very artistic people, and mm-hmm. um, it was just and and everyone who was there, like it was just so communal and so like hands on, and you really felt like, wow, I really am contributing to your wedding right. more than just like emotionally, but it, w- it was just really like creative and being part of the process. I like that. Yeah, and I, I like that too, just people kind of stepping outside the box and really making it their own. But I also, I'm, I'm a traditional girl too. I love a lot of the traditions that people do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you, you, and a lot of people take, they kind of create their own kind of smorgasbord of tradition, right? I love They'll that. take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, yep. you know, and then create something that's all their own. I mean, some people are doing that with marriages. I think it's called Absolute. open. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, what is marriage really? You know, marriage started out as a law, like a way to uh, keep track of properties and uh, livestock and, you know, children and stuff like that. You know, back, back, yes, back Women back, being part back. of that livestock. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think that... You know, there really, there really is no rule on what marriage is, and that to me is like the beauty of it. You kind of create it. You know, you create what it is. Yeah, I think it's it's probably going more that direction these days because yeah. the more that you try to put it in a box, a homogenous box of what marriage should be and how people should be, the less likely they are to stay in that box, and then it's just a big lie, right? right. So if you create your own, you know, kind of. Uh, what how what works for you if you create what works for you and you make the specific things that agreements between the two of you based on who you are and your beliefs individually and together yeah then I think it gives more uh, possibility for you to have a lasting union yeah I agree yeah for sure so now that we've solved that problem <laughs> for everybody all right there will be weddings popping up all, all over, over. <laughs> I love it so, um, you know, I was something that I was curious about, you know, we, we jumped, we were dealing with a little bit, but I wanted to know, like, what, what do you think, how do you stay open what, after being, like, really, really hurt? Like, how do you stay open? Because it's sort of like Annie's character, she was really hurt. She, I don't even think she knew how much she was hurt. It was just her self-esteem was so low and so brutalized. Right, And Definitely. then, you know, how do you just... I mean, I I guess there's forgiveness, personal forgiveness in there, but you know, just how do you stay open after dealing with that kind of, you know, loss of self-esteem and pain? I know for me personally, if you remember when I first started dating my boyfriend, I think my friends helped me to wake up to see, you know, what was good for me and what wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, I was maybe not doing, you know, when I was like down in the dumps about relationships and you know feeling really bad about myself a lot of you know my advice from you yes you're going out with him again and you know he's he's a good one you know you have you have your friends in those times to kind of say wake up you know he he's a good one and um I, i don't there wasn't so much of that with um with uh um i forgot her name Annie? yes annie getting mm-hmm. back with Rhodes. But you could tell from all the conversations that she had had with Lillian Mm -hmm. about relationships in general that Mm -hmm. it kind of like there was like a foundation for that. And I think, too, that sometimes, you know, people talk about timing. I think that sometimes it's just not the right time for you to be open. You know, I think you have to, like, not beat yourself up about where you're at. If you're feeling closed off to somebody, just, you know, just let let it be. Don't beat yourself up for, oh, I got to be this way. I got to be that. I got to force myself to go on a date. I, I remember in the past there's some guys that fantastic guys. It's just so like I wasn't there. I wasn't right. in that mode, you know. Right. But I think, um, yeah, just you know, taking care of yourself and talking to the people who love you most, your family and the friends you really, really trust. Because I think in those times where we we don't, we just can't see the way out and we're really closed off and not treating ourselves so well. I know for me it's been, you know, like friends like you that say, okay. You know, this is what's yeah, good for you. This you know, is what isn't. Because healing, you know, I was thinking healing happens uh, at different speeds for everybody. I mean, uh, Annie, Annie needed time to heal, and she found it. But it was it was actually rather quick. But she found it in a moment when she realized that I think she juxtaposed this guy and his actions. And in, in, in a moment, she saw it. This guy and his actions with this guy who was amazing. Yeah. And then it was like, whoa. 
right? I think it just landed, oh my gosh. And then she was trying to, you know, get him to forgive her for, you know, being, you know, in that space emotionally right. and all that kind of stuff. And he finally did, you know what I mean? At the end, a very 80s moment with him outside. Loved standing it. by the car. It was so 16 candles. Your ride is here. I know, and he's just standing there, you're like... <laughs> do you remember that yeah did helen call him i was a little confused I about think that she might have i got a little touch of that and i love and i love that if that if that was what that was it was like a gesture of She's real like, friendship right there yeah yeah and yeah and i and i again i liked her character i liked that touch of humanity because you know we're all the same we all just want to be included and be on the team and be invited to the party and mm -hmm. be loved and be heard and be able to be there for someone else, you know? It's like such a gift to let your girlfriends contribute to you, you know, and so. Absolutely, so yeah. I, was, I was wondering what you think this means for, uh, you know, chick flicks, right? Because this yeah. is a whole different kind of chick Not flick. Not a and romantic I've, comedy. No, I've heard mm -hmm. a lot of uh, guys say, uh, you know, that they like this movie better than Hangover or that this was awesome. They didn't expect it was gonna be like that. It was so funny and they really loved seeing women you know, uh, raunch it out, raunch it out, and the, and then there was something for everybody because they still had the love story in there, you know, and and they also had women. I think guys got to see a different side of women. I think they got to see like the best buddy that women are with each other. Yeah, you know, and they're just regular. They're not trying to put on airs. This is who we are when we're talking to each other, and we do all the stuff that you guys do too. You know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then so they got to see a little peek of that, and it was funny. And also like the competitive nature sometimes of women, which I don't think any man would be surprised about. I no, think I don't if think you have they a would. sister, even, and you know, you've ever had a girlfriend there. That, it, that comes up as well. Yeah, so I'm hoping that more movies like this are going to get, you know, are going to get made where we get to have women be really funny. A lot of times, you know, even on the um, comedy circuit, it's hard for a woman to make it because they think, you know, women aren't that funny and, you know, people think, you know, and yeah. not in, you know, sometimes. And and this movie shows you that because all those women were very, very funny. Yes. It shows you that women can be really, really funny. Yeah, Thank you, this, Tina Fey. Yes. Yes, and, and SNL and oh yeah, yeah the Groundlings and UCB and yeah I just love I I agree I think that I feel I feel very empowered mm -hmm. I feel empowered for this like women raunchy comedy you know balls to the wall type mm -hmm. um, genre that I I do think there's going to be more of this now and a movie that both men and women can appreciate that's yes. the amazing thing not I mean, put it in a box yeah, yeah. but. Like, you know, in the beginning, we were talking about how when you and I walked into the movie theater, we were so surprised that there were men there. And we're like, how could they drag their boyfriends here? Remember, there was a guy <laughs> no. there was a guy behind us who was asleep. He was sleeping in his girlfriend's but lap. But he wasn't asleep when the movie started. <laughs> and it was great. And then by the end of the movie, we were like, we should have brought our boys. Yeah, he was like, he was laughing. All the guys yeah. were laughing and really enjoying it. And it was it was great to see that, a, a date movie that was actually 50-50. <laughs> exactly. What is with us always, you know, it's like we have to flip a coin, you know. Are we going to see the action flick or the romantic comedy or... True, true. Yeah. I mean, nothing wrong with action flicks. I like oh, I love I action like flicks, too. You know? And every yeah. now and then they throw us a bone. They have a little love story in there. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah. That's all we need. We're, we're simple creatures, too, Ben. <laughs> Just throw a little love story in there. Okay, yes, not just car want. chases. Yes. <laughs> we want to see the guy kiss the girl, please. We want a different type of action. <laughs> uh, <woo. laughs> so yeah, yes. Yeah, so it was it was a very very fun movie. I I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing these women again. Hopefully, yes, I know a lot of them have known each other for years and years. There's a hangover too. Maybe somebody, uh -oh. maybe one of the other bridesmaids will get married, and the whole scenario will start over again. That's yet. a good idea. Right? There's like six of the them. The wedding hangover. <laughs> oh, All you right, we got some writing to do. You we got some writing I know, to do. We're gonna we write home. that script. The wedding. I love that. Yes. So we promised you to uh, give you the second half of Maya Angelou's poem, "What Every Woman Should Know." You want to start this one off? Yes. So now we're telling you what every woman should know. Every woman should know. How to fall in love without losing herself. Mm. We know that. Yeah, yeah. I think we know that now. Work. It took some time, but took I think I'm there now. Every woman should know how to quit a job, break up with a lover, and confront a friend without ruining the friendship. 
Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm that takes some practice. The breakup too. with the. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little sketchy on that one, but the other two, I'm good. I'm good. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> That's true. Or better. Practice <laughs> makes better. Right. <laughs> Every woman should know when to try how, when to try harder, and when to walk away. Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Every woman should know that she can't change the length of her calves, the width of her hips, uh-uh. or the nature of her parents. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I w- you know, maybe the waistline, though? We could we work could on the work waistline. We could work on that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and Spanx do wonders for the hips. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and for bridesmaids' dresses. Oh, yeah. I would know. <laughs> Every woman should know that her childhood may have been not have been perfect, but it's over. Even if you lie about your age. <laughs> <laughs> and you say you're still in childhood. That's right. <laughs> Every woman should know what she would and wouldn't do for love or more. Hmm. I think I'm good on that. Yeah, me too. Although, I don't know. I might move to an island. I'm saying I won't, but... <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, and I think when you're in the moment, when you're in love, you, uh, lots of surprises. Yeah, lots of surprises. Yeah. Yeah. That's the beauty of life and love. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, every woman should know how to live alone, even if she doesn't like it. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Yeah, you know, actually, I do like living alone. I like living alone. I like both. You know, yeah, yeah. It's nice to have companionship, so, yeah. Every woman should know whom she can trust, whom she can't. And why she shouldn't take it personally. That is very important. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, you know, when being at a wedding and whether you're dealing with family and other friends, it's like nothing's really personal. Everyone's right. just thinking about them. Right. That's true in you everything, know, though. Business. Yeah. Really, it's just true. you got to know who you can trust, who you can't. And you it isn't don't personal. don't take any of yeah. it personal. Yeah. Easier said than done. True. Every woman should know where to go, be it to her best friend's kitchen table... I'll be right over, I Tamika. Know. Or a charming inn in the woods. That's Jeremy. <laughs> when her soul needs soothing. Mm. Yeah. So it's really important to acknowledge like where you're at, what you need. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and where you can go to breathe and get to know you. Remember who you are, right? Yeah. To remember who you are and what you're about and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes we get lost in the sauce, right? Yeah. The sauce of life and the voices in our heads and all the minutia. And then sometimes you just need to take a moment wherever that moment is yeah. right yeah so um and every woman should know what she can and can't accomplish in a day a month and a year yeah yeah i'm still working on that yeah i think i too. can do it all in a day yeah <laughs> so we have to forgive ourselves for what we can and can't do absolutely so thank you so much for listening and um we're looking forward to uh bridesmaids too From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.